Hi friends. Now we are going to cover how we can debug a standalone report. So I go to this transaction and this is generally it would be a custom report okay that you have created and this is just a simple one okay c38 and i want to suppose put a debug point so i'm going to display and and here i have put already a debug point how you can put a debug point is you can click here or you can click here like this okay now this is a session breakpoint if you want to do an external breakpoint that means uh, if it's if it's uh, uh, like even the users who are logged in in another uh, session with another user ID will also stop it here. Okay, so generally we use the session breakpoint here. I put the session breakpoint. Now I'll click on execute. Okay, and here I'll click on execute here. And now if you see. It will stop in that debugger place and there i will show you so if you double click so suppose you want to see what is there if you see it's doing a select on all these all these fields and uh, it's getting from this uh, table okay so i want to see suppose the number of entries in the table field or what are the entries there so here you can see all the entries that are there so we may this is the validity date, validity period. Now, if you want to find a field that uh, it's not showing here because it's down here, you can just click here and you can go here and try to find that field. Okay, so suppose I want to, I don't know, I'll click ER date. Okay, that's the creation date. And here you can see all these things. So this is very, very essential. Okay, so what you do whenever you stuck in SAP, okay you can just double click and now if you want to see it like this uh, like in the parallel way you can click here and you double click you can see all these 46 entries okay so this is the way to find now here another piece that you can see is we have one thing called sy okay this is the system video and this variable is very essential here you can see the number of entries that are there so sometimes you might say oh there is a requirement that you need to find where, how many entries are there in the internal table okay so you can get it from here 46 entries okay now there is this field called site epics which is the current loop so i will show you what happens later so i'll just go i'll click f5 i'll click f5 i'll click f5 click f5 now in the meantime i'll now go here if you see the site avix has changed to two so the current counter is two that's why it's showing two okay so you can find like lots of times you might say i'm looking for a particular entry and it's in that second counter okay second loop pass or something that's very essential then there are other different fields you it might be essential but for sure you will use this site avix okay which is the current loop the site uh, d database count the site avix uh, the site if you also is used and let me see any other fields that might be helpful i think that's it the the rest of the fields you you don't use it so much okay uh, but uh, but as another thing is you use for sure is lots of times you want to do take the t code from where it's getting called so you can put site e code like lots of time you want to check oh if this uh, enhancement or this program will be only this part of the code should be only used when you have a check on site e code as se 38 but if the t code is something else it will not show this is one very important thing you can put then there is site data where you can find the current date okay and then you have sci name for sure where you can find the user id with which i am logged in so all these things are other things are like i think sys i um sys uh, i think uh, local something local so i use it i think that's the time yes this this gives the time 
Okay, so these are very essential system variables that you might be that you might be using. So once you are done, you can put another one here also a breakpoint if you want to put breakpoint here. Also, if you want to replace a breakpoint, you can click here and all those things. So you can do a lot of stuff through here. So this is this covers all the aspects of how you can debug a standalone program. So that's it. Thank you.